myself in, I'm so used to being sort of in the punishment seat and it's from, and I don't accept that from men. The interesting thing is I don't accept that from male partners. I don't accept that from Me men. Ever. Ever. It's so weird. Only like, women. If a guy tries to sort of put me in my place, I'm like, are you joking? You are about to meet a person you did not know existed. But with women, it's very like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Please, sir, may I have some oh, more? Yes. And, and I feel like I would have been, I, I would have been able to like be in a relationship with a woman if I weren't so afraid of them. But like, <laughs> I'm so petrified of- it's Interesting, I was I just- be, Like let myself be vulnerable because I'm so, like waiting for the other shoe to drop, I'm waiting to be hurt and disappointed. It's so sad. <laughs> it's, and I understand it so deeply. And I'm like, it's interesting. I only want to write about women. I only want to talk to women. I only want to paint paintings of women, see behind yes. me. But I don't, but I'm like in a day-to-day -day way, there's a way that I can't relax. I don't mean to be a gender 100%. essentialist, an old gender essentialist. I know there's exceptions to everything, but that's what my now at 36 i'm able to like look at that look around me and understand and it's so interesting because you live in a family of men you have sons you have James. i know i lucked out with like the boys <laughs> well i know i'm always well, like how scared not. am i gonna be of my daughter stuff. so the book so that's the more macro thing and how would you describe the plot to people who don't know i would describe it as you know there it's it's a um post a woman who's like in the throes of postpartum she just had her second child she moves to new york city and she is exposed to this world of decadence and I mean, wealth that like you only see in maybe New York or London. I mean, a, a kind of wealth that when I lived in LA, I didn't even know existed. I was like, oh my God, Jason, like what is, what is this world? What is um, happening? It's bizarre. Uh, but yeah, she gets sort of swept away and swept up in this mom fashion influencer and starts to sort of see behind the curtain on like what that world is and the disparity between motherhood as we present it online versus motherhood as we're actually living it. And that was sort of what I, I forced me to write the novel was I couldn't get over the fact that like the people around me just like watch, watching it transpire and, and watching how Instagram sort of became a place where you could really um, make money off of being oversharing uh and you know it, this question that i kept like haunt it would haunt me at night was if you're so busy curating parenting online like how present are you in your real life for your actual kids well it's so, so that's like also guilt that i'm struggling with like, similarly to the and i had to just like i felt like if i don't write this i'm gonna become it that's such an amazing thing i feel like the if i don't write this i'm gonna become it is like a t-shirt that we all need because Yes. I feel like that's often what drives me is like writing the version of myself that I'm terrified will exist. And 100%. And I think what's also amazing is like you, something I've always admired so much about you is your willingness to share, whether it's like, I feel like you were talking about the fact that you'd miscarried way before that became something people were comfortable discussing online. Yeah. Or the complexities, like you don't spend all your time online presenting yourself as like a quirky but perfect parent, which I feel like yes. is classic. Like so many moms right. are like, oh, whoops, I fed my kids organic chicken nuggets for lunch. I'm a mess. And you're like, yeah. that's what I would do yeah. on my best day. Yes. And what I've loved is your willingness, even though you do have a big online presence, your willingness to actually kind of close the gap between who you may be behind closed doors and yes. who you're presenting. Yeah. But I'm sure there have been times where it's tempting to kind of like I know I feel it to kind of create a gloss on your life. And I feel like that's one of the reasons I am only logging in, into Instagram now after three years is because I could feel like I remember once Instagramming, like I'd had surgery the day before and Instagramming from the hospital and my mother being like, why are you doing this? And it's like, I couldn't explain, but yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm doing it for other people. I'm doing it to spread awareness. I'm doing it. And then if I really went down to the deepest level, I was like, I'm doing it because I'm lonely and mm -hmm. I'm about to get a thousand comments that say, feel better, babe, or whatever. And right. that illusion yes. becomes so addictive. Yes. So addictive. And I, I think, especially for uh, millennials or, you know, like, I, I always call myself a millennial, but I'm actually born in 79. So I think I'm actually like not a millennial, but let's just go with millennials. I think if we, if you had baby boomer parents who were fucking self-absorbed narcissists, the yeah. need for external validation is like so intense oh my god and you're also we like, you are like our ducks. of course we love instagram we're oh my, finally even when being my, validated 
by the way, like when my mom leaves me a comment on Instagram, it gives me a rush. Like sometimes I'll go yes. to like Instagram.com slash Lena Dunham and I'll be like, my mother left me a comment. But like it's a <laughs> Yes. But it does. It becomes, have there been times where you've had to go, okay, I actually need to step back from this because it's consuming my inner life too much? Oh my God, completely. I mean, it is like alcohol. I, I compare it to, I'm like, this is the cigarette I'm hiding from my children. This is the other woman in my marriage because it is the, the biggest narcissist in my life. It's like, if I don't feed this beast, the light goes out on me. I lose sort of my entire, for me, it's like, if I don't have the numbers to show, it's, I can't sell my next book. I, I don't have the ability to you know convince people that I'm worthy on some level. So, so yeah, like for me, it is such a big part of like, my job where like if I don't feed it it really goes away and it goes away fast so it's it and, and that like addiction it, you know the workaholic in me is like well I have to keep going I have to keep posting um but it's like the drugs I'm snorting up in the bathroom at night like when I should be sitting in front of you know my son's door telling him to go the fuck to sleep or you know whatever it is that you yeah. do at night in your house